I don't know what you do because Martinez, if I have it right, cannot be optioned. And why would he be? Wouldn't make any sense. Um, Gore can be optioned, but you have to ask yourself, why would he be? Does it make any sense? He's had as good of a four game stretch as anyone has in Padres history to start their career. It's not, that might not be factual, but you know, top five start to a career. Um, Snell's coming. You know, I think it's going to be based on merit. I heard Kevin Acey with Darren Smith today. Um, and obviously, Snell's going to be in this rotation. Obviously, Clevenger's going to be in this rotation. But guys have to perform. I kind of like the fact that you're basically putting, you know, you're creating competition in season. This isn't spring training trying to earn a job. This is the regular season trying to keep jobs. And I say keep the best, you know, maybe it's six. Maybe go with the six-man rotation. That would benefit guys coming off injuries like Mike Clevenger and Blake Snell. Uh, that means the less of Sean Manai and Joe Musgrove and you Darvish and Mackenzie Gore, but but Gore's on a pitch count. Gore's going to be on an innings limit. Forget the pitch count. He's going to be on an innings limit this year because he's thrown 50 combined innings over the last two years. So I say best six have the opportunity. You know, I, I think that's only fair. Now, who's the odd man out initially? Maybe hide Martinez in the bullpen for 10 days and see how it shakes out. Does someone fail to perform and then maybe move Martinez back in. But this is uh, this is like the 230 million CBT question. What the hell are they going to do with seven starters? And by the way, they'll have more. I mean, Adrian Morahone's coming. You know, Baez is coming. So, again, good problem. But, Will, like you said, it's a problem. Uh, Michael, thank you. Thank you for the super chat from uh, south of the border. Always cool. Thank you again for your support of the channel. If you guys are just getting in here, a lot of people making their way in from Petco Park. Again, if you're watching live or on replay, this is the wrap-up show. Hit subscribe. Um, we really appreciate that. Please hit subscribe. If you're a Padres fan, please smash the like button. If you're here, uh, please follow us on Twitter, uh, at John and Jim at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Um, let's see. Do you know the King right-handed pitcher for the Yankees consistently throws two to three innings in high leverage situations when he comes in a huge weapon. Do you think Clevenger or Snell could be something like that for the Padres? I just don't know. I think guys coming off Tommy John like Clevenger, and Clevenger's been a starter throughout his big league career, I'd be surprised if he took a starter and made him a reliever coming off Tommy John. Because the thing with starting is you know your routine. And the thing with pitching in the relief, and we've seen it maybe a little bit with Denelson Lamette, is the routine lacks, and therefore it can be troubling. It can be trying for players. And then Snell, who's also battled... I don't know, happenstance, injury, um, over his first two years, at least in a Padres uniform. I don't see it. I, I don't see, you know, you trade Luis Patino and you make this, you know, big trade for the former Cy Young Award winner who's pitching in game six of the 2020 World Series against the Dodgers. And I don't see it, uh, you know, and with the, the money they're earning, I, I think it would be Nick Martinez. I don't think it would be Mackenzie Gore. I mean, maybe there's a scenario where you could move Gore. I, I wouldn't entertain it. Why would you? Why mess with it? Um, I just don't know what they're going to do. I mean, that that's, you know, what, what do you guys think? You know, comment, please, in the chat. I mean, what would you do with these seven? Obviously, there has to be an odd man out. There's no other way to look at it. And, and here's the thing. The clock's ticking. Blake Snell's about to be back. Um, he'll be back in the middle of May, but it's May 5th. So what are we, seven days out? At most, he makes two more appearances in the minor leagues, and we're 12 days out, 11 days out. So... Blake Snell's coming quickly, which I think is a good thing. Everyone wants him back. Everyone wants him healthy. Um, if you get the pitcher of August um, from a year ago and you're the Padres, that is a, you know, that's a big win. That is a really big win. Um, so, you know, it's going to be um, – I'm trying to do multiple things here at once, by the way, guys. But, um, yeah, it's going to be uh, – it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Taco Bell. Um, over under, we trade a starting pitcher for another bat. I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if it was one of these seven pitchers. That's how I feel at this current moment. Obviously, here, here are the names it's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be Manaya. You just acquired him. It's not going to be a core. You got six years of control. Um, it's not going to be Musgrove, obviously. It's, I don't think it's going to be Nick Martinez in year one of this four-year deal. I, I don't see why it would be. I mean, maybe there's a scenario. Maybe if you get creative and you get later into the year and these other six guys are so effective, you can consider something like that with Nick Martinez because I think he does have value. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, and then the whole Snell-Darvish conversation. Darvish makes a lot of money. He's owed a lot of money. He's late in his career. 
what are you getting back? You got to make sure to get the return you should get for someone like you, Darvish. And to move you, Darvish, who's like your ace on a potential playoff caliber team is a little aggressive. And then there's Blake Snell. And the question with Snell is also, are you getting max value for a guy that has pitched a half season for the Padres and was essentially ineffective last year outside of a month? So my hunch is no. I think it's a reasonable and fair question because this team is somewhat lopsided with pitching as opposed to hitting, although they're still fourth in the big leagues and runs scored per game. So my hunch right now is don't. That's my feeling. I think some people probably disagree with that. Um, I wouldn't do it. But we'll see. We'll see what happens over the next couple of months. And I, and I don't think they would consider it before, you know, really trade talks heat up, which would be mid-June. You don't normally see any sizable trade before mid-June. And then, of course, most deals are done between July 20th and, and August 1st. So I thought Nick Martinez was good. Again, Joe Musgrove's gone seven once this year. Sean Mania went seven once this year. Nobody's done it more than one time. Um, and to me, what it's kind of saying, to me, what it's solidifying, and tell me if you guys feel differently, I think it's going to be a six-man rotation. I, I really do. Um, now, is it going to be long-term all year? It's hard probably for that to occur because when you go into a six-man rotation and let's say someone only goes two or three innings a couple of times well now you're taxing your bullpen every sixth day and that then impacts the bullpen the rest of you know the, the turn through the rotation but i could see it being six-man rotation for a couple of weeks even longer than that um because i just think they're gonna have a hard time telling one of these guys hey you're not in this rotation they'll have to tell one to go from seven to six once blake snell returns but are you gonna tell two of these guys that you're not gonna be in this rotation Right. I mean, it just seems a little far fetched to me. Um, and I'm with you, Michael. You know, I'm with you. It, Bo Mel in the um, in training camp, training camp, spring training um, did say he he's against six man rotations, but not if it's for the betterment of the team. He said, you know, traditionally I'm paraphrasing, you know, traditionally he wouldn't be in favor of a six man rotation. But if there's a reason, if there's a reason to have a six man rotation. And right now, there's kind of a reason to have a six-man rotation. Now, can you piggyback? Yes. The, the issue with piggybacking is Mike Levenger just threw 95 pitches. What if he goes six innings in an outing? Snell then goes two, and then he doesn't pitch again for six days? So that's the issue with piggybacking in the big leagues. There's a lot of piggybacking that goes on in the minor leagues, but they just limit pitch counts, and they just protect it, and they just – you know, they chalk it off to development and say, well, he could have gone six innings, but he went four because then we had someone behind him go four innings. But you can't have Clevenger go four innings if he's thrown 59 pitches and he's allowed, you know, zero or one runs. So that's my issue with piggybacking, you know. You know, this is interesting from Andrew. And thank you guys for commenting. Thanks for uh, getting involved here tonight in the wrap up show. If you want to make sure we get your comment, you can always use that super chat function. Great way to support. Uh, this channel. So Andrew says Nick Martinez can opt out starting next year. Or maybe we trade him since he probably will opt out if he continues and can make more than six and a half million dollars a year. You know, it's, it's an interesting way to look at it um, with Martinez, who's got this series of one year contracts that's like coined a four year deal, but it's just a series of one year deals. And if you're a starting pitcher in the big leagues, that's effective. You're making more than five or six million dollars a year. So if he has proven his worth, here in a Padres uniform, let's say in a half season, and therefore he has value as well because he's only got another $15 million on his deal over the next three years. Well, if it is even a three year, even if it's just a trade deadline acquisition, because here's a starting pitcher that's got a three and a half ERA uh, that's been good. Maybe, you know, I, I just think back to last year and it's like they, they were trying to acquire starting pitching and then they lost starting pitching on the day of the deadline in Chris Paddock. And I'm just so tentative gun shy so to speak about trading away effective starting pitching right now and, and maybe that's not the right way to look at it because like you said there's seven guys and you're going to get more hone back you got ryan weathers um in triple a you, you have some other names i'm sure they'll pop up over the course of the year that are pitching in the minor leagues um shoot i mean they could even acquire you know pitching depth obviously at the deadline as well um yeah, this is a good point as well. And thank you for watching on Twitch. If you're with us on uh, Twitch tonight, greatly appreciated as well. Um, yes, I mean, it, it's a business of winning. 
And I've said that a zillion times on the wrap up show over the last three years on radio and on web and on YouTube. I've said it a million times on the radio um, and having, I, I feel as if I have a really good perspective on it, having spent so much time in the minor leagues, but then also working with staffs that communicate with major league staffs when I was in the minor leagues. And there's this clear cut delineation, obviously in the minor leagues where you are developing players and the major leagues where once you're there, the development should be, in my opinion, thrown out the window in the, in the betterment of the team. And the only thing that matters at the big league level for good, successful organizations is winning. And the Padres right now should be a good, successful organization the way they're spending. Um, so I think it's a good point. I do. Um, this is this is a big boy business. Everyone there is being paid well. This is about winning. And do what is best to win. Now, with that being said, if what's best to win is making a tough financial decision because some of those guys in the rotation are making more money than somebody else, but somebody else is pitching more effectively than the guy making money, then put the guy that's more effective in the rotation. That's what I would say. So I think there's two there's two sides to that coin, um, but I do think it's a really um, astute point. I really do.